Insertion sort is finding the position to insert and insert the value, current value, into the correct position. That is the basic idea about how to implement insertion sort. So, because you have to find the correct position, you have to have sorted data first, sorted subset. You can see here, sorted subset is requirement. Whenever a data set has one item, we can say that it's sorted because there's only one thing, so there's no comparison needed. So, insertion sort always starts from index 1 because index 0 is always sorted. So, you are going to start from index 1. You are going to compare the previous value. Then, my current one, so because the goal is my insert my current one into the correct position. If my current one is smaller than the previous one, that means if the previous value is bigger, we are going to shift that. So, 3 will be shifted to the next position. Then, if you look at here, there's no more to compare. Index out of bounds. In that case, index 0 is the insertion point, position. So, my current value will be inserted into the correct position 0. Now, we can see up to index 1 is sorted. Now we are going to insert the index 2 into the correct position. So to start the second piece, I'm going to copy those items. Then now I can say I'm going to start from index 2. Then compare with the previous one. Our previous one is not bigger. That means my current index is the insertion position. So you are going to insert that front index. So there was only one comparison. Then I'm going to write the rest of them. So after pass 2, it guarantees up to index 2 is so. Now you are going to start from index 3. I'm going to put index numbers on the top. So start from index 3. Compare. With the previous one, all oh, previous one is the bigger. That means keep comparing. Compare, oh, this is bigger. And keep compare. Uh, this is not bigger. That means just right before it is bigger. It's my insertion position. But while I was comparing, I should shift to. So after compare 1 and 4, 4 was shifted. Then after compare 1 and 3, 3 was shifted. Then after compare 1 and 1, insertion position is decided. So insert that position 1. Then I'm going to copy the rest of them. Then it guarantees up to index 3 is sorted. Now I start from index 4. Compare with the previous one. Previous one is not bigger. That means by insertion position is itself. So insert my 5 into index 4. Then I'm going to copy the rest of them. Now after pass 4, Get it onto index 4 is sorted. 1, 1, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, it is sorted the data. Now I start from index 5. Compare with the previous. Oh, previous one is not bigger. That means I insert me to the, my current position 5. Then I'm going to copy the rest of them. Now, after pass 5, it guarantees up to index 5 is sorted. Then I'm going to start from index 2. Compare with the previous. Oh, this is bigger. That means shift. Then compare with 
index of four. Oh, this is a bigger, so shift. Now compare with index three. Oh, index three is bigger, so shift. And compare with index three. Ah, uh, index two. Index two spell is bigger, so shift. Now compare with index one. It's not bigger, so stop. And insertion position is index two, so insert index six value. Actually, the current value to index two. And the rest of them is here. Then, so now I start from six, so then index seven. Well, so compare. Oh, nine is bigger, so shift and compare. I was not bigger, stop. That means my insertion position is index six. Insert it there. Then I'm going to copy the rest of that. This is how insertion sort to work. So now it is a little bit different because in the selection sort, if I need to find the max, I have to compare at least a certain amount. Like if I need to, in the past one, in the selection sort, I had a total comparison of seven times. If there's eight items, seven times. And six times a comparison, then five times a comparison. It was very consistent. But in the insertion sort, if you see the comparison, that is the red arrow. In the past one, just one time. In the past two, there's only one time. In the past three, one, two, three times. In the past four, only one time. But in the past five, one, two, three, four, five times. Then two times, then one time. So there's no consistency. Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not lucky. It depends on how you are having the, uh, how you have the data. Sometimes it will take very short because there is a less comparison. Sometimes it will take very long. If every case is the worst case. So if I have like a data is already split, in that case, we're going to compare only one, then only one, and only one, total three times a comparison. But if I have reverse order data, you are going to compare one, then switch it, right? and you are going to compare one, uh, actually not here, one, two, so two, three, four, then you are going to compare one, two, three, then finally one, two, three, four. That means one, two, three, four, five, six times a comparison. Three versus six is six. How about if I have 10 data, that will be nine versus uh, one through nine the series. That means nine times versus one plus two plus three plus four plus up to nine. So probably 40. 45. So 9 versus 45, like a, a, it's about 4 point some times bigger. So insertion sort, and so we can see is inconsistent. It's not consistent. That is a big deal of the insertion sort. Now let's go over some exercise questions. Exercise is number one. Using the insertion sort algorithm, what does this array look like after three passes? I start from index one. Compare. So now I'm going to have three, four. Now I start, that is the first page. Now second page, I start from index two. Compare. Now I have three, four, seven. Now last time, I start from index one. Then compare, so I'm going to have one, three, four, seven, and the rest of them, three, eight, five, six. Using the instance of the algorithm, what does this already look like after three passes? So now I'm going to do again, start from index one, compare, 
So negative 4, negative 3 is in order. So negative 4 is smaller than negative 3. And second time, compare on the index 2. Negative 7 is smaller than negative 3. That means shift. So here is a negative 3 now. And negative 7 is smaller than negative 4. So shift. Now I have negative 7, negative 4, negative 3. Then next time, I'm going to start from index 2. Oh, negative 1 is bigger than negative 3, so stay there. So finally, negative 7, negative 4, negative 3, negative 1, and the rest of them. Negative 3, negative 8, negative 5, negative 6. Now I'm going to go to the next page. Uh, let's think about the big efficiency of the insertion sort in its best case. Best case is when the data is sorted or if it's a big data, like a diagram, in that case, almost sorted. Sorted or almost sorted, that is the best case. In that time, each, time, each pass, you are going to compare only one time. That means in the full loop, from index one through the end, you are going to compare only one time. Then Insert. So this is a bigo and this is the best case. Compared to the selection sort, bigo n square each time. And average case is bigo n square because this one is not going to roll. Comparing with previous values until it finds the correct position. So you can say the times you are going to, to shift each time. So inside of there, now you are going to have, oh, I'll also try to use a different color. Now you are going to have equal N for shift. So average case will be equal N inside of people N, people N square. That is average case. The worst case will be the reverse order. Reverse order, there will be maximum number of comparison. But still, I'm doing the n shift, but n is the maximized in this time. So big efficiency is still n square, but when you really compare the time, this is much, much bigger. So we'll focus on the number of comparisons. Uh, here is the six items already in random order. So average case will be the random order. Then this one by formula, this one will be, then we have reverse order, what will happen. But it looks like the same as the selection sort. However, in the insertion sort, we have a shift. Then each time we have to do shift. And also we have to insert. So if we insert part is the same efficiency as swap, but we have extra task that is shift. So actual time insertion sort is longer than selection sort or the worst case. And number four, here is a six item array or the solid order. The comparison is one, two, three, four, and five. So only five comparison. You can see in order five, random order seven, worst case 15, reverse order 15. And number five, here is a six item in the reverse order yeah, that is a 15, that is this case. Number six, Conclusion, the best for insertion sort is when it is nearly sorted, almost sorted, nearly sorted, or already sorted. So best case is big N, then worst case is big N square, but maximize comparison and shift.